Welcome to the show of all shows. It's the Black Drum Creative Hub. This is the show where we get to dissect issues in the industry and bring to you players from the creative sphere. My name is Kwan Salakuku, your host, and I'll be right back with more interesting content. Welcome back. This is Black Drum Creative Hub, and I have a very, very interesting guest in the studio today. Is a man with many hats. As a film critic, a lecturer, a journalist, a PR practitioner, like I could go on, but you're gonna find out who this person is shortly. It goes by the name Dr. Hussein Shaibo. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, how are you? I could pleasure. go on with you. I mean, I was when you kept <laughs> mentioning this, that, that, I said, ah. <laughs> All this for me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm it's happy to be here. It's a pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you so, so much. So tell me, all these titles, lecturer, film critic, media and PR practitioner, um, everything, like I could go on, like, just like I said, earlier, I could go on. How are you able to manage all of these professions and how did you get here? If I start to tell the story to take, let me, let me be brief. I had an early interest in the arts, in, in performing arts particularly, and then in mass communication. So while I was going to school, I was looking towards that direction, but my parents wanted me to be a soldier. Yeah. Um, I actually got, you know, permission, uh, got like admission into the Nigerian Defense Academy. But I skipped that because at the time I was to go for the NDA, yeah. Chief Ogunde, Hubert Ogunde, the doing of Nigerian theater, had come, had an audition, and he selected me to be part of the National Troop of Nigeria. So I came to Lagos as a member of the National Troop of Nigeria. We were performing, and it was such a big thing for me to be selected by the doing Chief Hubert Ogunde, you know. And then when he came, it was through him that I fell in love more with theater and with film. Of course, you know that yeah. he was a filmmaker as well as a theater practitioner. And so when he died, I continued. But as I was doing that, you know, I got into a lot of dancing, a lot of performing arts, you know. Uh, you won't believe that I danced as, can uh, like, you like, some like I danced now? professionally. Can you still do some and moves? I, I, I can, I can, you know. <laughs> okay, but, maybe but after, the after the interview. After the interview, you know, I danced professionally. And then I, will, I even led Nigerian dancers as their president for wow. four years, wow. two terms That's for four amazing. years in, the, in this country. And then I, while I was doing that, you know, I just said uh, I had an opportunity, you know, to contribute to The Guardian, you yeah. know, their pages on theatre and all that. And while we were doing that, um, Nollywood came and Nollywood became so vibrant. And so this benevolent editor, German and Nicola Kua, then the arts editor, before he rose to become the Sunday editor and left, um, he now told me, look, Shaibu, we know you're a dancer, we know you're a performing <laughs> artist, but your interest, I like, you know, the way you are following this people in Hollywood. Report in Hollywood. That's how I started reporting film, you know, for the Guardian newspapers. And from film, I started reading from first degree, second degree. Wow. My uh, PhD that I did, in mass communication, and I finished. It was actually why I went for my master's at the University of Lagos uh, in 20, I, I, I went there 2010, and by 2012 I was done. But as I was leaving, you know, around 2014, I got the invitation from them that I should come and lecture at the University of Lagos Department of Mass Communication. And then I accepted the offer, but they said that the condition for my lecturing will be that I must run my PhD program there. I said, well, fine. So I ran my PhD program, finished, but I started lecturing from 2014 until this morning that I'm talking to you because I just finished, you know, invigilating an exam in Amazing. school. So it's just me and everything and every how and every how. But, you <laughs> Interesting. Know, but, First off, yeah. I would say now I have to be really careful mm. with the way I question you <laughs> as a guru. Mm -hmm. As my boss, <laughs> you remember I said my guest is very interesting. It's been interesting so far, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, as a film guru, what's your appraisal of the Nollywood industry since its inception to date? Like, since this old ball game started? Well, I think we have come a long way, um, even though the 
industry is still evolving. Yeah. You know, I mean, it took them a long while for us to begin to refer to Hollywood and Bollywood, particularly Hollywood. I mean, the industry is over 100 years old yeah. in, in Hollywood and all, and all that. So the industry is still evolving. I mean, we have come from when we used to release films directly to, v, to VHS to when we got to VCD to when we got to DVD. And now we are going back to cinema, you know, and all that. And then we are releasing on, on social media, on uh, YouTube and yeah. all these other platforms, platforms yeah. and all that, you know. So the industry is still evolving. There was a time when it was difficult to do edits. Now it's possible to do all forms of edits. There was a time when, you know, uh, earlier, uh, one of those veterans, uh, Matthew Simpa, was telling us that how they were doing particularly some kind of shots and all that. Now nobody does that, you know. You have the equipment to yeah. do all that. So we have really moved from time. There was a time when we were releasing films like, like I mean, like Pure Water or yeah. some to speak, Sachet Water. Yeah. You know, now, I mean, there's some level of sanity, regulation and all that, you know, even though they are still releasing as much as, you know, like they are releasing so fast that sometimes, I mean, I used to write a column in yeah. The Guardian called Movie Run, and I couldn't keep up because I would think that I'm reviewing the latest film. And then, and then out. about 10, <laughs> they have released 10. If they don't release in Kanu, they will release in Aba, they will release in Idumota, Pound Street, Aba, and so on and so forth. So you just find out that the industry is evolving. They, they, but the only problem I have is that those challenges that they had 20, 25 years ago are still there and they include capacity. Mm. Up to today, we don't have the right. I mean, we, we, we still need to build capacity for the industry. Then the other problem that has been the problem is finance. It's the problem of finance that made us stop producing on the big gauge, on celluloid and on reversals and all that. Mm. It's funding, you know. Up to now, we still have problem of funding. People to make films, they complain a lot about where to get monies and all that. There was a time in the industry where people were selling their cars, selling their okay. personal properties to make films and the rest. We should have sorted out a process of funding for the industry, whether by grant, even whether by loan, even though I don't advise anyone to use loans to make yeah. films in this industry. Because you go get a loan to make a film and it flops, you know, because of the poor distribution network. You know, so we need to address that area. Then, yeah, and so on. There are so many of those issues are still there, but we're evolving as an industry. Okay, so thank God you spoke about funding. Mm. So how would you say the government is playing a role in the creative industry? Would you say it's adequate or inadequate? And if it is inadequate, what can they do? What can be done? With everything you've talked about so far, what can be done to actually right this wrong? Well, I, I wouldn't say that the government has done enough for the industry, and I also not say that the government has not done anything for the industry, because there was a time when they released about three billion naira as grants to the industry for training, for production, and then for distribution. The previous government before this did that. Yeah. And then there have been so many interventions by government in terms of regulation, in terms of support, you know, and all that, you know. And then there have been so many uh, financial interventions, but basically loans, at the Bank of Industry and by the Central Bank and so on. There have been those interventions. But we need to do more than that, you know. This is an industry that you have both um, uh, uh, grants and then loan. So if you want to make films, you can go and assess grants, you know, to make films. If you want to build a uh, production infrastructure, you can go and assess grants to make those production infrastructure. Even if you get loan, there should be some kind of rebate. There yeah. should be some kind of tax holiday for you. So that, I mean, this is production. It's not like manufacturing. So they shouldn't look at the business of filmmaking that way. They should look at it as something that they need to support. There should be like single digit. Yeah, you can give single digit loans. You can tell somebody to come and take a film and maybe exploit the film for two years before he starts paying back the money. That's mm. how production is. It's still Black Drum Creative Hub and I'm here with Dr. Usaini Shahibu. He's been exploring and enlightening us about the Nollywood film industry. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for more.
Seduction is not something that you just only it's not few buying people, and selling. My dear, only <laughs> few people are lucky. And it's, it's showing in the industry. Only few people have been that lucky yeah. to go to the cinema, for instance, put their films there and they blew. Yeah. For instance, the last film that was touted as the highest selling film yeah. in the country that yeah. went to the box office yeah, was The Wedding Party. 2016, The Wedding Party made about 264 million naira. Yeah. That was what was declared about the film. I may not be exact about that, mm. but it was about 264 million or thereabout. That was 2016. We had to wait until 2020 20. for Omo yeah, to by Funke override that. to now override that mm. and make about 500 million or so. You know, that's, I mean, that's not, that's not how you know a successful industry. Mm. We should replicate this. We should hear that. When you hear box office returns in Hollywood, do you hear one that has happened yeah, in one year yeah, and yeah. they have to wait for five years to yeah, hear another? True. They follow themselves like that. So it tells you that there's something fundamentally wrong with our distribution infrastructure. There's something that is not correct about, you know, how we need to push these our films and the rest. So we need to invest. And the other area, again, that I think that government needs to help yeah. is the area of not production. People can raise funds to do production, but they must begin to think about how to help people to set up production lots. Yeah. And when I mean production lots, I mean places where you can go sit down and do your production from start to, to finish, finish without and any you have interruption. without any interruption. That's why you will see some of our films. They will start it from a big house. When they want to end the film, they will end it outside the house. Mm -hmm. Probably because the owner of the house suddenly says that He's tired. He yeah. cannot give his house for one week for a production. And then they'll go. Mm. They use hotels to shoot. The hotel man can say, look, you people are disturbing my clients. Yeah. You need to leave and all that. But they need lots. To build a lot is not cheap. It is something that some, the government can invest and maybe get private sector investment, you know, uh, investors who can come together, build this infrastructure so that the industry people can use. I know you maybe mentioned that they built one, one state government built one in Cross River State, but that was too, too, too massive for the industry. They built it to the Tinapa studio, and at the time they wanted to commercialize the studio, they were pricing Tinapa studio, use of Tinapa studio for a day for about one million naira. Wow. If a How filmmaker, much are you going to if a filmmaker <laughs> sees one million naira, he will do he will do five films. So there's so much that government needs to still do. I'm not going to say that they have not done anything because there are certain interventions. But yeah, like government, the National Theatre, I heard they're trying to renovate. Okay, of place. course, yeah. this is a very big intervention by government. Yeah. You know, for a long time we have been looking at government really turning around the National Theatre because yeah. the original plan of those who built the National Theatre was for the National Theatre to be turned around, like we turn around our refineries every 10 years. If we have sustained it, every 10 years. Perhaps today we will not be talking about the National Theatre being rehabilitated, yeah. you know. But we are very grateful because it needed some political will for this to be done. And we had one in the current minister and the current administration who got to government and said, okay, these guys have come with the one, the bankers committee have come with a wonderful proposal. They want to fix the theatre and then turn the surrounding areas into a creative hub. Let's give them the opportunity and work has started to my surprise. It's to my surprise because we have been hearing about this rehabilitation yeah. for a long time. But this time they gave definite dates. And yeah. now they are telling us that in the next 15 months, the theater will be, work will go on on the National Theater. And about two weeks ago, they got everybody out of the theater. Well, everybody, the theater is like a skeleton now. Wow. Got everybody out and they are fixing the National Theater now. Nice. So in the next 15 months, we have, um, you know, a rehabilitated national theatre, good enough to show those films, to do your plays and all that. The only fear that practitioners have is that if you put up all this, we will be able, so will it be affordable? Okay, affordable. Yeah, maintenance. Okay. Definitely those who build the place will maintain, but will it be affordable, you know, to the, yeah, that's true. To the ordinary practitioner? But I'm sure, I'm sure the managers at that time will be able to work out something that will enable the arts to thrive and not to suffer. Yeah. Because it is one thing 
to uh, get a good venue. It's another thing to yeah. have yeah. for the artists to be able to use that venue to show they are. The National Theatre should exist to promote culture, to project the rich cultural heritage of this country and to preserve the rich cultural heritage of this country. Finally, I would like to ask about film festivals. Mm. People really po they post actors, they post on social media when their movies get nominated at some film festival in some country, maybe Toronto, and then they are so excited. What's the importance of a film festival? How impactful is it in this industry? Well, a film festival is just one of, one of the many areas where you can distribute your film or market your film or promote your film. Okay. The other areas will be theatrical distribution, maybe say, uh, cable rights, television rights, okay. video on demand and so on. But festivals are where you network, festivals are where you promote your films, festivals are where you meet major um, sales agents, you know, distributors and so on. So a lot of us have not been able to take advantage of these festivals and all that. And then when you screen your film as festivals, you know, people get to see it, you get reviews about your films. What is published about your films at these festivals, you know, help in marketing your film, help in selling your film. If you remember a film like Lion Hearts by Genevieve, it mm. was when he went to Toronto that it was seen at Toronto and Netflix. But how do they see? The how do they find out about this movie? They, they uh, why they find out? Yes. They f when festivals come out, when festivals, uh, when uh, when festivals are ready, they mm. send out information about entries. Okay. For instance, there are some festivals now that are running that have started calling for entries. Even Toronto, okay. that is supposed to be in September, has started calling for entries. So you enter for the festival, for okay. the festival, or sometimes the festival managers or festival, the source yes, for the source content, for content, yeah. you know, the, have you been a festival manager before? No. But you know this over. <laughs> no, I'm you know? <laughs> So the, the source for this, the source for content, they write to you to tell you to submit your film. They send you links. Sometimes they send you waivers and then you submit your films. And then when your film is programmable, then they program it for the festival. Okay. That is, they put it on schedule it for people to come and see. So people saw the film and they picked it up. A lot of our guys have exploited that avenue, but so many of us are still not ready for that. A, a platform, but it's a very important platform. It is the best way to go international. Mm -hmm. Best way to go international. I mean, you see Lionheart made so much noise. Yeah. See when. Um, and it didn't even, I don't think it was in the cinemas here. It wasn't in it cinemas, wasn't yeah. Cinemas. It was at the festival there that I made name, and then because he had to go on Netflix and because he had to be entered for as Nigeria's entry yeah. of uh, that particular year at the I Oscars. Think it was the first at the Oscars, it was first Netflix, Nigeria to yeah. get here. To go, no, to be the first film uh, that would be the original film, film. by Netflix. Yeah. And then it was our first entry to the Oscars, and they needed to be shown here. So they came back and they screened it for yeah. a few days and so. So festivals are very important, awards are very important. What does award do for you? You get a nomination, your name is everywhere that you got a nomination. If you want to interview me tomorrow, they will say Oscar nominee, nominee <laughs> and all that. And then you win an award, they say, Oh, this film has won an award. award and usually when actor. you see our award-winning actor, and then when you see the poster, you will see the crest of the festivals on them. Then somebody will say, ah, if this film won in Toronto, ah. I will see it. If this film won in Oscar, I will see it. Whoa, they say she ever won Best Actor in one <laughs> film. I must Ooh, go and see that movie. film yeah. and all that. So it does a lot in promoting the film, not just a film, but the filmmakers. Yeah. You know, that's an opportunity for a director to shine. You know, sometimes in festivals, they normally, after screening your film, they speak to the directors. They have something like a Q&A. So mm -hmm. you speak more about the film, the challenges of the film. But most importantly, it is for networking purposes. And it is to get, you know, people to talk to you. Sometimes they may not buy that film. Sometimes they may not talk about that particular film you have made. But it gives you opportunity to have them begin to discuss with you about the next Project. Project, because yeah. somebody may see a film that you did, oh, he doesn't like this film, but he thinks that you have a potential. Mm. And then he'll say, let's talk about your next project, and I'm ready to fund your next project, and so on. And then he will start talking to you from there, from investing. And you know the thing, they miss most of the things that we don't do right here, we talk to our distributors here and our sales agents after we have made the film. 
yeah, and sometimes something you should have done yeah, in the process. It has to be it has to be part of the process. Yeah. It has to be part of the process. Sometimes we we'll finish the film and then carry it. From the point of development, they are interested. They will tell you what will work yeah, and what yeah, will not work, work, you know. Because these guys, they are in the business of they know all the elements. They know what you need to do to get your film flying and all that. So they will help you to get funding. Also, they will help you so to be able it, to yeah. push your film when it is ready. Interesting. Mm. Thank you very much. Sir. I had such an amazing time talking to you and I learned a lot about the movie industry. So I would like you to tell us where you see the Nollywood industry in the next, say, five, ten years and what advice you have for filmmakers, actors, anyone looking to come into acting later in the future. Well, so I want you to tell us that. Five years. Say five, ten. Say five, ten years. Yes. Okay. I see Nollywood, you know, breaking new grounds, you know, pushing the envelope. You know, there are some people who are determined, who are very, very determined to make a statement, not just because we have conquered the country, you know, even though our films are not everywhere in the country, but we have conquered the country. We have conquered Africa through the help of yeah. some of these cable television stations and the rest. I mean, everywhere you go in Africa, they are talking about Nollywood, Nollywood. Some countries are even naming their industries, like we named our yes. own Nollywood and all that. <laughs> So I see us trying to break the grounds. We are going to be inspired by the feet of people like Bonaboy and Whiskey. Yeah. You know, we are going to be inspired by what they have done because their music, have, their sound have actually gone global. Yeah. And, this, and we started the global journey before these the guys. Music, you know? yeah. and, and I see us, you know, uh, getting, you know, inspired by their feet at... Um, um, the award, they just with the Grammy Awards, and then we too will try and go. And then in the last two years, we have also succeeded in getting our entries into Oscar. Even though I don't see those things as standards, you know, for any industry, you know, but I just see us. Because actually, you know, we talk about oil money, we need to begin to touch the dollars. Mm. You know, it's a. I think it's yes. just a recognition. Yeah, yeah, we need it to. It might not even be about the award. Yeah, we need yeah. to begin to touch foreign currencies. You know, we need to begin to talk about dollars. See what is happening in our tech industry. These guys are building up the tech platforms and they are selling it off with huge amount of money declared as dollars. We should be able to break. We should be able to have one theatrical release at least in the U.S. in the U.K. You know, that will bring us some real yeah. funds and all that. And then um, I, I need to advise our filmmakers. I mean, the time for using residual knowledge to do filmmaking is over. Go get trained. I didn't get here because I, 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 was, I, I had residual knowledge. Yes, residual knowledge helped me. Mentorship also helped me. But we need to get trained. And there are so many ways you can be trained. If you can't get the time to go to school, you know, to study, you can, you can train under someone. There are people who have given their time, their life to the career, to the profession. You can, they can mentor you, you can train under them. A lot of today uh, professionals, you know, were mentored by other people and they got trained. We must be ready to learn on the job too and we must be ready to get trained. And then the other thing that I think we must do is that we need to begin to think together as collectives because they say that the value of a whole is greater than the sum of its parts. There are so many divisions in the industry. There are so many divisions that is not helping the industry to grow. We need to begin to think as a collective. We need to get ourselves together, you know, join guilds and associations so that when there is time to speak up, people can speak up as, you know, as a group and not as individuals. And then most, most, most importantly, we need to remember we need to remember that we owe it a duty as filmmakers, you know, to make films that edify, you know, to make films that we should just not make films for uh, just doing sake, you know, make films that edify, make films that resonate and make leave a lasting legacy because it is not just about uh, remembering the films that you have done, but how impactful, yeah, those you know, films were. those films were. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Usaini Shaibo. I had such an amazing time 
talking to you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. That was an interesting conversation with Dr. Usseini Shaibu. He said so much about the Nollywood industry. So guys, don't go anywhere. Sit back, relax, because it's time for news and gist on Creative Hub. We'll be right back. Hope rises for the television sector as the NBC Acting Director General, Professor April Armstrong Idachaba, assures that Lagos will fully transit from analog to digital terrestrial broadcasting on April 29th. Professor Idachaba broke this news while inspecting the equipment on ground in the state at the Nigerian Television Authority, Channel 10, Tedro Show, Lagos. He expresses the hope that Nigeria will complete the digital rollout by 2022. Africa's biggest film festival, the Pan-African Festival of Cinema and Television of Ugadugu, known by its acronym in French, FESPACO, did not hold in February this year for obvious reasons. The organizers have announced a new date for the highly anticipated biannual showcase. The new date is October 16th to 23rd. 2021. Besides the new date, there are new regulations in line with COVID-19 protocol. This year's event will take place with social distancing and other precautions to prevent the spread of COVID. The 700 people who had been invited to the previous FESPACO would now be cut to 150 this year to help reduce infection risk. Opening ceremonies will take place in Ugadugu's Palais des Sports, a 5,000-seater stadium instead of the city's Joseph Conombo Municipal Stadium, which has a capacity of 25,000. The Nigerian Film Corporation has announced the date for the 12th edition of Zuma Film Festival, which it says will hold from December 1st to 7th, 2021 in Abuja, the nation's capital. Submission of entries is open to interested filmmakers from Nigeria and around the world started April 2nd and will end on October 30th, 2021. The theme for this year's edition Nigeria's foremost film festival is Show the Money and will focus on highlighting the great investment opportunities available in digital content creation and exhibition. The Silicon Valley African Film Festival has also called for entries to its 12th edition. Deadline for submission is 30th June 2021. Submission can be done online at the website scrolling on the screen. The festival holds October 8th to 10th, 2021. Ozaya Johanna also known as Wise Kid, blows through shortcut. The upcoming Nigerian artist reportedly made 30 million naira monthly since October 2020 by cloning Whiskey's Made in Lagos album on Apple and Amazon streaming platforms. Wise Kid released an album, Las Giddy Made, but allegedly uploaded Whiskey's Made in Lagos album with a rearranged tracklist. He allegedly used another title to deceive streaming platforms algorithms. However, Wisekid said he did not stream Wisekid's music, claiming that Free Me Digital has been distributing his own songs. Rita Dominic will marry. Nollywood actress Rita Dominic will marry after all, though with a caveat. She has said she respects the institution of marriage as her parents were married and had a beautiful relationship during their lifetime. The problem is, at some point, it begins to annoy you because of how much importance people have placed on it. I do want to marry and I want to get it right once and for all. You know, we make such a big deal of it, we force people and put pressure on them to go in. When they eventually rush into this union, they make mistakes because they were only trying to please people. She was quoted as saying. We've come to the end of today's show, Black Drum Creative Hub. I hope you enjoyed watching and I enjoyed hanging out with you guys. Don't forget to tune in again, same time, same place. Same host, my name is Consola Kuku, and you can also hit me up on Instagram at Kuku Talks. Don't forget, this is Black Drum Creative Hub. <laughs>